Hello everyone, welcome back to V2 eShikshana program. So in this lecture of mobile application development, I will be explaining view groups. So what is this view group means? So firstly, you must understand what's the difference between view and view group. So view group means, just this is my application screen. This is my application screen. So how the elements, how the components that may be button, input components are the output components. How those components are displayed in the screen, that's what we call view group. How that component has displayed, submit button, this is what we call view. View means component, how they are grouped in this particular activity is called view groups. So any view group for that matter, we have totally 10 features that we are going to consider in the view groups. The first one, the very important feature, the first one is layout width. And another one thing, in some cases, instead of this view groups, we may refer this also a layout. Both are same. Layout and view group, both are same. There is no difference. View means component, component and view, both are same. So view group have totally 10 features, very important features. First one is layout width, means width of the layout, width of the screen. So generally we have two options here, one is wrap content and then one is match parent. Match parent means if you want to occupy whole screen like this, the width of the screen has to be whole screen then you have to give an option match parent. Wrap content if you want only this much. Then wrap content. So the next feature is layout height. Height of a layout. Once again we have two features, two attributes here. Either you can select match parent or you may select wrap content. These are the two important features Either it may be for view or it may be for view group, you are going to experience these two features. Layout width and layout height. The two possible options are match parent and wrap content. So along with these two, we have another eight various uh, attributes. The first next one is layout x. What is this layout x? So here, instead of width and height, we are going to work with the lex, uh, x and y coordinate. So you're going to place the components based on the x and y coordinate value. In such scenario, you're going to mention this. Okay, so we have, other than match parent and wrap content, we have two, three notations that we are going to use. That is dp, sp, and pxl. So density independent, scale independent, and pixel. So if you are a designer, if you know how to provide the attribute in the form of a density independent pixel, scale independent pixel or pixel level, so then you might go with the directly using these notations. Otherwise, if you are a beginner, it's better to go with the match parent or wrap content. So these are the four attributes that we have discussed now. Next, we have another six. Next one is layout weight. Means how does art, uh, how that component should appear in your layout, whether it's bolded, whether it's, it should occupy more screen, more uh, space. So that's how you can refer, the, provide the attribute by using a feature that is layout weight, layout gravity. The next one is layout gravity. What is this layout gravity? So. We have two options here with respect to layout gravity, whether you want that button to appear towards the left side or towards the right side or towards the center or towards the top or towards the bottom. So that's how you can provide the gravity for that particular view inside this view group. View group means layout. View means the component. Layout gravity means whether you want that component to appear towards the left side or right side or top or bottom. So other than that, we have four attributes which are similar, just it will mention the margin left, margin right, 
margin top, margin bottom. What is this margin left, margin top, margin right and margin bottom? So what's the space required, margin left, what's the space required towards the left side margin? Margin right, what's the space that you want to leave towards the right side, margin right side? Margin top, what's the space that you want from, from the margin top? Margin bottom, what's the space that you want for that view from the margin bottom? These are the 10 very important attributes which we are going to use inside the view group for the specific placement of the components like edit text, plain text, button or checkbox, radio button, whatever you want. So coming to the types of view groups, we have totally seven view groups other than the constraint layout. The constraint layout is the basic one. So whenever you open the mobile application development Android Studio framework, the application will be present in the constraint layout. So what's that constraint layout? You have to set the constraint towards the all four sides. So you have to set the constraint towards the top, bottom, left and right. So that's the default layout. Other than that constraint layout, we have seven different layouts such as first one, the linear layout. So when we are going to use this linear layout, when you want the things to fall one after the other or one above the other. In such scenarios, you are going to use the linear layout by providing the orientation either vertical or horizontal. So the next one, next relative, group, relative layout, this is also another type of view group. When you want to place the components one after the other the, based on the relative position of previous component. In such scenarios, you are going to make use of relative layout. Next one is absolute layout. Generally, we are not going to use this absolute layout. Why? Because if you are using this absolute layout means, so here the thing should be represented in the form of a pixels. That's why we avoid this. And even now, there is no support for this absolute layout inside the Android Studio framework. Next one, frame layout. So this is an integrated layout. If you are working with linear, if you are working with the relative layout, and if you want to dedicate some space like this to display any image. In such scenario, we are going to make use of this frame layout. Next one is table layout. So if you want to display the things row wise, column wise in the form of a table row and a column, then we are going to make use of a table. For example, if you want to develop a calculator, the best suitable layout is table layout. Why? Because you have to arrange the buttons in a, set, in a way that it will look like a table. In that scenario, you are going to make use of table layout. The next one is scroll view. So if you want, to elaborate this mobile application development screen by providing a scroll feature, then we are going to make use of this scroll view and it will be placed above the linear layout or relative layout. So in such a way that what are all the components that you are going to place, so here in this application should be scrollable. These are the various group view groups and these are the various view features that we are going to view in, views in the view groups. So just by taking a simple three buttons example, I'm going to demonstrate how it works. Let's start the demonstration. In this demonstration, I will be demonstrating the various types of view groups that can be used in the Android application development. So totally we have six view groups. First one is view near layout, absolute layout, table layout, relative layout, frame layout and scroll view. These are the uh, six different types of groups, view groups that can be used to arrange the components in the designing. So firstly, we will start with the first one. So all put together we have seven. The first one itself is constraint layout. So let's start the Android Studio to demonstrate this one by one. So what's the difference between view and view groups? So view means every individual component that is there in your design. Group means how those components are grouped in your design. That's what we call view group. 
so once you create a project so observe I'm creating a new project empty activity next and I'm going to give the application name as view group application finish so once you create a project initially it will be present in the constraint layout constraint layout will be the default layout that we are going to use in our Android application development why it will be default constraint means what generally what is constraint constraint means it has been packed on all four sides so whenever you are going to use this kind of layouts so you have to provide the constraints on all four for four sides for the components that you are going to use so just observe my application is ready firstly I will show what is constraint layout by taking a simple example so my application is ready I am not going to do anything with respect to this Java part in throughout this demonstration just I will be working with the design part first one so first I will take make use of constraint layout so just if you observe the code part of the design you can look here so the layout that we are using initially it will be the constraint layout so what is the unique feature of this constraint layout so one unique feature of this constraint layout is default layout and most of the designers will be using this layout as a uh, primary layout while designing the android application development that's why it has been made as a uh, default layout just observe so what does this constraint layout means so you are in cube please observe here so we have constraints on all four sides so what is the constraint on bottom what's the constraint on left what's the constraint on right what's the constraints on top the constraints on top is parent it's nothing but view group constraints on right is parent it's nothing but screen the constraint on left has parent constraints on right is parent just observe what is this parent means just if you look at this design the constraints of this view group view so top it is a parent screen left it is a parent screen right it is a parent screen and bottom it's a parent screen this kind of layout is called constraint layout just I'm going to add three buttons so just observe I will drag and drop three buttons here for whatever the components that you are going to create in this constraint layout you have to set the constraints on all four sides so just observe in place of this I'm going to use this as a constraint so can I please observe the constraint on top is this text view just if you look it into this in the code you can observe constraint on bottom it's a parent screen there is nothing but a screen constraint on end it's also parent start but in the top the constraint is the text view that is nothing but what we have placed here so like this you can place the constraints you can add the number of widgets that you want in the constraint layout by setting the constraints on all four sides just observe for this I'm going to set the constraint as this particular top constraint as this particular button just observe I'm going to set the left right and this similarly I'm going to add another one button for this the constraint bottom is screen there is nothing but parent constraint top is the previous button left screen parent right screen parent just observe I execute this so where are all the components present in the same uh, output you can see in the output so I'm going to change the text text I'm going to make it is it as constraint layout and I'm going to change the size also just for the demonstration purpose constraint layout so I need to update the Gradle script Oops. 
void data just observe i will execute this how the output will look like the layout that we are using here is constraint layout This is the first view group that we are uh, developing that is constant layout. It is a default one. So whenever you create a Android application, by default it will be present in the constraint layout. So if you want, you can change it to the remaining six types of layouts that is nothing but linear layout, relative layout, table layout, scroll view, frame layout, absolute layout. But initially it will be there in the constraint layout. The one problem that is associated with the constraint layout is so you have to set the constraints on all four sides. So if you miss to set the constraints on all four sides, the components will appear in the that they, are, they will overlap and they will appear in the top left corner in the form of overlap. So even the advantage of this constraint layout is the uh, components that you are going to place in this layout will remain unchanged so they are fixed so that's why most of the developers will make use of this constraint layout as a primary layout that's why the android studio uses it as a default one just observe my application is getting executed so waiting for target device to come online so my device is in online so installation is happening so you can see the three buttons wherever we have placed in the same manner those three buttons will appear in this layout or even you can call it as view group constraint view group this is a default one Oops. so we have designed in the similar manner the view group is the components are as arranged in the view group this kind of layout is called what constraint layout so let me explain the next one that is linear layout so i'm going to change the text so i'm going to change the text i'm going to make it linear layout what is this linear layout if you want the things to fall one after the other either in horizontal or in vertical manner then we are going to make use of this linear layout. Just observe, I'm going to delete this. I have deleted all the buttons that I have inserted in the constraint layout. So whenever you are using the linear layout, the first thing is to provide the uh, change the layout. The change should happen like this. In place of constraint layout, you have to add linear layout. So while using the linear layout, you have two features. One is either you can provide the orientation in horizontal manner or in vertical manner. Firstly, I will demonstrate with respect to vertical manner. Just observe, I'm adding a attribute by name orientation and I'm providing the orientation as vertical. So just observe now, if you look, on, look into this, so it has been packed and it is in vertical manner. Just if you add button, there is no need of placing any constraints. The button will occupy one after the other like this. So just observe, I will execute this. You can see the output. So this is a good demonstration about the linear layout. So when to use this linear layout? So when you want the things to fall one after the another immediately either in horizontal or vertical manner, it's better to go with the linear layout. So instead of wasting time in uh, assigning the constraint towards the left, top, right, bottom, so it's better to go with the linear layout without, without any hurdles, you can place the components one after the other in the form of a form. Just observe, this is a simple demonstration on the linear layout and the orientation that we have provided here is li or vertical orientation just observe i am going to delete this components 
I'm going to delete this components. This is a component tree and I'm going to change the orientation from vertical to horizontal. So whenever you want to change the uh, view group or the layout or the orientation, you have to visit to the code itself. So you cannot do that in the design directly. So horizontal orientation I have provided. Just observe, I'm going to add a button. One, two, three, so observe the orientation is horizontal if required you can make the space smaller like this just observe i will execute this you can see the output in the similar manner in our emulator generally we are not going to use this horizontal orientation whenever we use uh, a linear layout the most common orientation that we are going to use in the linear layout is uh, vertical orientation just observe the output so the linear layout the orientation is horizontal one after the other one above the one below the other means it's a vertical orientation the second this is a simple demonstration on the linear layout just observe i'm going to remove the buttons that i've added so that I can demonstrate the next layout that is relative layout. So I'm going to change, I'm going to remove the orientation. I'm going to make it vertical and I'm going to change the layout. I'm going to make it relative. Relative. So I'm going to once or once you make it relative I'm going to change the text associated with that one that is I'm going to rename it as relative layout what is this relative layout it is nothing but it's somewhat similar to some some uh, the linear constraint layout that we have used but in constraint layout you have to set the constraints for all four sides Instead of setting the constraints for all four sides here with respect to relative layout, it is enough to set the constraints, it's enough to set the target for only two sides, either left and bottom or right and bottom and you can scroll wherever it is required. Like this. Just observe. This kind of layout is called a relative layout. So next, for this relative layout, I'm going to add three buttons. Once again, observe. I am setting the const. I am setting the relative position to the parent bottom. Next, the relative position of the first. I'm going to take it to the. And I'm going to map it to the. left side and I'm going to place it like this next I'm going to add another one button so as I mentioned earlier only two side relative position is enough there is no need of setting the relative positions for all four sides so observe I place here and I'm placing the relative position to the top So if you want to place the components relative to each other, then it's better to go with the relative layout that I am doing right now, like this. If you if you are not, if you don't wish to use the constraints on four four sides, then it's better to make use of this relative layout to make the items how the components should will be placed in the relative position. Just observe, I will execute this. You can see the output. So my application is getting installed. This is one simple example for relative position. 
so the title is not appearing so th this kind of problem will arise when you use a different device just observe this is the option we have here so device preview so it's better to go with the one which is there in the output that is which one you are using for to see the output select that one instead of that here i have selected 5.0 phone pixel of dimension 180 by 120 1920 so that's why it is not the particular thing the text that i have placed is not appearing so it's better to select the one which is required which in which you are seeing the output that is pixel api 30 is the one which i am using here to see the output so if you select that one and if you see the output you can see the all the components in the emulator so if you select different phone and if you see the output in some cases it might not appear uh, available just by changing the phone or changing the orientation so you can see the different components which are there in the screen There is some problem with respect to the text view that I have added, so I am going to remove it. So just I am going to set the constraints. So I am going to add the text view again, and to set I am going to set the constraints again. So in some cases, while changing the after doing the design, if you change the ori, if you change the um, uh, view group, the design will not accommodate. So relative layout in such cases kindly delete that particular component and uh, apply the design again so just observe now obviously you can see the out you can see the title in the output so so don't change the view group after completion of the design if the change is required, it's better to change the view group before designing the application. Once after designing the application, so if you change the view group, the changes will not be incorporated to the components which we have used in our design. So just observe, the things are appearing relative, layout and three buttons. So next. I am going to demonstrate a wonderful layout that is table layout. What is the table layout means if you want to accommodate more number of items or the components row wise and column wise, it's better to go with the table layout. So just observe I am going to delete all these three things which we have added in the previous example. Why? Because directly by keeping these components if I change the view group, the change will not be accommodated. So table layout, if you want to arrange the items in row wise and column wise in the similarly how we write the table, it's better to go with the table layout. Just the same thing in place of relative, you can use the table layout. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is while using the table layout, you have to use. So you have to use the table row and table column table layout so I'm going to add firstly I'm going to add the text view observe So before I add the text view, firstly you have to add the table row. Inside the table row you can add whatever you want. Table row. So inside this table row if you want to add what text view. Now I am adding the text view. So inside the text view, I'm adding the text.
table layout and uh, I'm going to provide the row and column so this orientation is not required table row and I'm going to add the components So in some cases the optation that you are going to make for the table will not be applicable so automatically in such cases you have to update the closing tag manually itself so just observe table so button so next if you want to add a button once again so it should be placed inside the row table row so inside that I am adding a button button so inside that I will add Android ID plus slash ID so like that you can add any number of components you want in the form of a table just observe table layout and table row if you want to display it in the form of a table so this is how you can add just observe whatever I have written in the code that is appearing here table layout inside the table layout we have a button and I have created a table row so table row inside that I am direct presently I am creating a button that is appearing here without text what is there on it so this kind of layout is for table layout if you want to uh, add button or so if you want to add anything in the form of rows and columns then it's better to go with the table layout so the next one is the frame layout so this frame layout is a unique one where uh, you can use this frame layout inside the relative layout that we have used in the previous example. Relative layout. This is a relative layout, right? So we have a button here. We have already placed a button. So I'm going to remove this. In place of this, I'm going to add a text and I'm going to place it. So if you want to insert a unique frame inside the normal view group then it's better to go with the frame layout I'm going to change it and I'm going to change it as the text as frame layout and I'm going to increase the size of this. So presently I am using relative layout. Inside the relative layout you can make use of the frame layout. Uh, so just observe this is a text we watch have in the inside the relative layout. So after this I am going to use the frame layout. Inside that frame I am going to place the inside that frame layout. Frame layout. So I am going to width wise. I'm going to mash wrap content height wise I'm going to wrap the content okay so then as we are using the frame layout we have to provide the just observe the frame layout may be available here so like this so you have to set the constraints so and you have to enlarge this frame layout and you have to set the constraints like this 
So for example, if I want to display image inside this frame layout. So it's very simple, just observe I'm going to add an image view inside this. So inside this I'm going to add the image view. add a button in the relative layout. This is a simple demonstration of a frame layout and relative layout. The overall layout that I am using here is relative but I am adding a frame inside that relative layout. So just observe you can look at the into that in the code itself. The main uh, layout that I am using here is relative. Inside that relative layout I have text view. Along with the text view, I have a frame layout inside that relative layout which holds image view and the button is present inside the relative layout. Just I so I will execute this. You can see the output. So that image view is not appearing here. Why? Because that image view, well, because we have not captured any image. This button will come under the relative layout, but the image view is present in thus observe design. I'm going to bring it down. So it does occupy the whole screen. So once after this frame layout, table layout, relative layout and absolute layout and linear. So the next one is, can you please observe the frame layout is appearing by because it is overlapping with the image. So the next one is scroll view. It is a type of another type of view where you want the screen to be scrollable. Where you want the screen to be screen to appear as a scrollable one. Then we are going to make use of the scroll view. this frame as well as frame layout which is not required in place of this frame layout I'm going to change the side text and I'm going to make it as scroll so what is the scroll view generally so you might have observed in the uh, normal applications so where this screen becomes scrollable how just by adding the scroll view here in place of a normal layouts, we are going to use scroll view. So I'm going to change this one to scroll view. And inside this, I'm going to add the buttons. So whenever you are using scroll view means it's better to go with the uh, linear layout. So add the buttons. Just 
messed up some. So as you add more number of buttons, this becomes scrolling. So to demonstrate the scroll view, you have to have more number of components in your screen, then only you can demonstrate this scroll view. Without. Otherwise, it will not be demonstrated. But because the scroll view will generate automatically as the components process the threshold. Just I'm adding buttons one by one so that I can make the screen scrollable. So just to show how the scrolling will be done, for the last button, I'm going to change the text and I'm going to add the text yet. In place of button, it will be having a text yet. So now observe, I will execute this so that you can uh, observe the scroll view in the output. How the uh, layout can be made scrollable. Just the thing is you have to use the scroll view. So it's better to make use of scroll view with the linear layout generally. Why? Because uh, the linear layout the, and along with the linear layout you have to provide the orientation as uh, vertical. Just observe. Can you please observe? So this is the scroll view and you can observe the last button is having end. So if I scroll it bottom, that button will end. So these are the various type of view groups that we can use to accommodate the components in the Android application design. What is that view group means? How you are going to arrange the components in the Android uh, activity screen? That's what we call view group. So for that we have totally seven view groups. The first one is constraint that is default one followed by linear layout, relative layout, absolute layout, table layout, frame layout and scroll view. So these are the total seven different types of view groups which will be used in the Android application development for the design purpose. Thank you.